Welcome to Talking True, where I speak to people who have had near-death experiences, mystics, healers, and folks waking up to the truth of who they are. Today, I'm excited because I have a, a return guest, Morgan O. Smith, who has been on the show twice, I think, already, and this is the third time. And we've had such wonderfully deep conversations before uh, I wanted that to continue. And today we're going to be exploring the theme, the myths of self-realization. So if you want to find out more, stick around and stay with us and join. Please join the conversation. So Morgan, thank you so much for joining me today. As always, it's a gift to have you on here and I'm looking oh. forward to diving in. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, for the third time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. So I do want to say, you know, before, just in case people are new to hearing about you, that you are a spiritual teacher. You're the author of a book titled Bodhi on the Brain or in the Brain, Bodhi in the, in brain. the brain. Bodhi in the Brain, yes. And you're also the founder of Yinergy Meditation. Yes. And um, if people want to hear the your awakening story, I know that you spoke at length about that in the first episode um, a few months ago. A piece um, of the experience. I, a, I went through yeah. it and I watched it again. I went, oh my gosh, there's so much, so much I was missing from from that. Uh, but yes, it can go into um, in, in more length uh, watching that episode. Yes. Yes, excellent. So in other words, the reason I'm kind of referencing that in terms of context is that because we're speaking about the myths of self-realization, mm -hmm. I do want to emphasize that we both are speaking from a place of authenticity and we know of yes. which we are speaking about. And that's important because as we both know, there's a lot of information online that can be very confusing, misleading yeah. and um. It, it's easy to speak about self-realization or enlightenment or have you wanted to um, you know phrase that when you are speaking from secondhand knowledge rather than from your own direct experience mm -hmm. so, um, and, it, and it also is unique from uh, from from individual to individual so a lot of that stuff would probably have to be cleared up a bit for people who are not or are still confused about how this whole thing works so I'll try my best I'll do my best good. Excellent. So yeah, one, one thing I did want to speak to with respect to the myths of self-realization, and it's certainly something that hooked me, was the idea that I would become a better, more improved version of who I thought I was at the time, almost like some superhero, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And along with that fantasy was the idea that, you know, everything would come to me e easily and effortlessly mm -hmm. and that I wouldn't ever have any kind of difficulties or challenges or, you know, kind of negative moods. Or, you know. yeah, um, disappointment, yes. <laughs> exactly. So, so that, and, 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 you know, in a way, I think it's a good thing, maybe. That oh, that, it is a good thing. Yeah, even though I said what I just said. Um, I would have to go into depth why I say such a thing as a, a huge di disappointment. Um, because uh, because if you read a lot of the stuff that they talk about in regards to, especially like um, Kundalini awakenings, of all the things that would that should happen with like what you were saying, like the super abilities, the superpowers, the cities, um, that differs from person to person. Um, and in many cases, when they talk about those things, they're talking about things that happen temporarily. It's not like it's a permanent um, um, ability that you gain. Some of these things happen temporarily because the nervous system and everything that's happening within the, the brain and the nervous system is working itself out and shifting energies and things of that sort. And so the result sometimes could be of um, electromagnetic energy and all that type of stuff that can have an effect on things that are objective from time to time. Um, but I, I would say that very few of us actually develop that into a permanent uh, type of city, city, uh, which they would call these uh, supernatural abilities. Some people gain them, other people don't. Yes. Uh, and it's not something that people should be looking forward to gain. If it's one of those things that you that you happen to um to uh to attain, hey, so be it. But that's not the goal. So yes, uh, yes. I wanna, yeah, take that off the list. Uh, I thought with in my case, things do some things do improve. Um, some things do enhance. That 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 is true to some degree, but not in my in my personal experience, not to the degree of what I was hoping would happen, this ideal version of what I had 
in my mind that would happen after reading these uh these texts in regards to what happens after a kundalini awakening a spiritual awakening um spiritual attainment and things of that sort um but yeah but what you gain from that is so much more deeper more important than the than the the the, the abilities themselves Yes, yes. I mean, I, I absolutely 100% agree with that. And in fact, master yogis, great Siddha masters, really emphasize the importance of not chasing after the supernatural powers because they say they will come to you and land in you mm -hmm. in their own way and in a way that is organic to you. And you, they should never be utilized for kind of self-importance or, um, you know, selfish Yes, I mean, or used for selfish reasons or to to amuse a crowd or things of that sort, yeah. Yes, to entertain, yeah. Okay. But, so, and and in fact, you know, the other part of that too is, is that with respect to self-realization and all of those things, the eye, the eye that you are hoping will be improved <laughs> is what has to go. It's the, it's the personal eye, the personal story, so to personal speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still there, obviously, and Always we res respond to it and appropriately and, you know, and all of those things. Yeah. Um, for, but, the survival, for the survival of that small self, yes. Yes, yeah. but, um, but it's not that that becomes self-realized. It, no. It's holding away of that, you know. But that's um, the part that's so hard to explain, is that that thing that becomes realized, the thing that's always been realized, it's so hard to explain because as soon as you say, I, I'm spiritually awakened, I've awakened, um, people get the notion that we're talking about that the small self, the ego becomes awakened. No, that nothing happens to that part of itself. It's the it's the it's the Taria, the, the the empty witness that realizes itself. But it's hard to explain because if you only know the small self. Trying to wrap your head around this, 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 uh, uh, wrap your head around the, the self is a very difficult thing to to comprehend, because if that's yeah. all you know, what could be behind this small self that you're speaking of? And as, as you know, like trust me, there is a thing, the foundation, the essence of, of what you call the small self that's beneath that. Yet it transcends all of that, and that thing that's behind the small self is the thing that's behind all small selves. So it's not like it's your own self-realization. It's the realization of everything, realizing everything um, of itself. Yes. With itself. Because all there is, is the self. It's so the it's, self. It's the self. And so, so it's a very hard thing to wrap your small self around because your small self will never transcend to that. No. No, it can't. It's impossible. Just impossible. Or, yes. Yeah. Another way of putting it is impossible for the mind to wrap itself <laughs> or the it's story the within the mind. Within the um, story within, uh, yeah. Yes. However, yeah. you just said it just now, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, you know, another part of all of that too is that certainly what drove my seeking in the beginning was this idea of becoming a better, improved version and then maybe finding work that was kind of spiritual, you know, I had this notion, you know, there I was teaching high school, you know, very, very busy schedule, mm -hmm. very demanding job. Oh, yeah. And I, I had this fantasy that, you know, once I attained liberation, you know, and I was there on the mountaintop, <laughs> then I would may maybe be able to do a, something spiritual where I had my little office and my incense burning and it was all yeah. beautiful and never, I would never have any hassle, you know. <laughs> And um, yeah. of, of course, there's that that that's just another fantasy. And it's another fan even though that happens to a small minor minority of people, but the majority of us will still carry on with your, your with your same day to day job. Uh, some people will change jobs into another everyday to day job, uh, but the amount of people who I've met and spoken to um, seem to be like ordinary people who um, who still have their 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 nine to five. Um, some of them run their own businesses and uh, some are, you know, do contract work, things of that sort, but nothing has changed in that regard. And if anyone passed by you, they wouldn't notice that, um, that, that, that a shift has happened. There are some people who can feel that, who can feel the shift. I remember one time I was on the, I was on the, um, on the bus years ago and a man came on this bus, I came on the bus and I just felt this presence about him. And I just said to myself, this guy self-realized. I never got to confirm if that was true. But that was my first um, take as soon as this this person 
um, came into my into my into my into my space. And that's the first thing I've said. And I've said that a number of times, especially when I met actual um, spiritual teachers and gurus, I felt that same energy. Um, but you have to be really sensitive to something like that. Most people can't do that. Yes. Well, you know, the, the way I put it is, is even if you're not speaking or you're speaking about the weather, your state speaks ahead of you. State speaks ahead of you. Yes. And, yeah. and, you, and if you're looking for somebody who conveys that or you're looking for truth or however you want to put it, you do feel it because somehow there's the, certainly in my case, again, there was antenna out. I was always looking for someone or something that could prove what I knew to be true. And, and, and you can certainly feel it if, if that is evident and that shift has happened in a person. And even if you don't ever speak to them, there's a transmission of energy that happens. Mm -hmm. And I know in my own case, I've had so many situations and an evidence of this happening through students through students work yeah and through what i saw especially in the kind of in the early days when i had soon after this radical shaktipat awakening through a dream lucid dream initiation um what would happen is you know and i was working in a, uh, a government school in very difficult conditions here under a metal roof with no AC, it was absolutely boiling hot, you know, huge numbers of students. It was like 1,800 students and mm. student school had been built for something like 800. So we were very overpopulated and, um, you know, in a, in, in a difficult situation. And the students we were serving were coming from, you know, poor backgrounds. So oftentimes it would be um, just the mother, you know, just the mother at home with no father, the students were often having to work after after school to make mm -hmm. money to take home to the family, and so there was all of that going on. But and c primarily coming out of a Christian sort of orientation. So, and I would never wisely, I never used the the language of yoga in when I was teaching or speaking mm -hmm. about anything, you know, or chakras or awakening or anything. Yet, I'd have students coming to the art room and asking me can I stay here for lunch because my spirit feels comfortable here? Or um, can I just sit here quietly? I just want to gather myself. I'd have students coming in and putting their hands together and going, oh, like this. Mm -hmm. And again, that was completely outside of their kind of uh, lexicon with respect to what they were feeling inside. And then I saw evidence of it too in their artwork because I'd see images that I knew spoke to the awakening process. Mm -hmm. and, and when I moved out of that, and, and, and actually years, 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 I mean, decades later, I will occasionally bump into and see students around, you know, in Nassau or wherever. Um, and they will start telling me things that have happened in their lives that speak to the awakening process, even though their language might be dif different because they're coming again out of the Christian tradition. It's evident from what they're saying that there was a transmission that took place that's beyond the ego. It's mm -hmm. just the self transmitting itself, the energy of the self, and, and, and doing that work of awakening. And it's really incredible when that yeah. happens. And those things can show up too, especially um, if, um, if you're working with a group of people with, who, who have uh, more sensitive nervous systems. Also too, it could be certain parts part of the world because just like how we have chakras, the earth itself also has its own set of chakras and um yeah. it also depends on where around the world people are, are are where people reside where that energy is very evident especially with people like you around who are able to feel that um but in but in um urban areas or in um uh mar marginalized areas uh in say for example like in a, a big city like toronto there's so many things going on that um even though everyone are probably feeling it but they're distracted by other things, um, you know, by their smartphones, social media, uh, all the stuff that's happening in, in regards to the development of their area um, that people could be attracted to. And they miss that very subtle, that subtlety that is right in front of them. Uh, but there are, of course, there's certain people in, in the midst of, of, of that group of people that will feel it. Um, yeah. It all depends, but it's always present. It can't be felt by anyone if you're sensitive enough to feel it. And then like in your case, it seemed like a lot of those people had that spiritual um, sensitivity. 
and are able to pick that up very easily to that when they're in your presence, um, or at least in that in the environment that you're in, uh, people are able to feel that and they start to show within yes. their actions, at least in, in 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 the presence of your of, of the location that you're at. So that's very very interesting, and and more studies need to go into that of what's actually happening, especially in terms of like someone like yourself with um uh with the with that net with that very sensitive uh, nervous system and the electromagnetic energy that's coming off your being and how does it and how does it affect people when they're in that bubble in your bubble in your space that would be interesting too and i don't think there's enough studies on that type of stuff because some people still see that stuff as woo woo yet there I, I i swear that there is a lot of science behind that that um if they're looking for the right things with the right equipment they can find some of that stuff oh sure absolutely yeah. I and mean, it's yeah and it becomes just as i said so self evident it sort of proves itself you know and again, the ego, the mind could never wrap itself around how that works. It's, how that it's, works, yeah. It's it's really impossible. But um, anyway, that was certainly one of my fantasies that I would find work that was spiritual with, you know. And in the early days, I never recognized yeah. what was happening with respect to that sort of transmission, and that I was where I needed to be. And right. it, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting that you brought that up because I never had that personally. Um, I never had that type of fantasy. But I was working with um, a participant of mine years ago. We were working on a project where we were building um, a center. Uh, we were building a center, and this guy was chosen um, as one of the. Um, he was chosen as a placement student to help build the center, and his whole thing was, and he ended up quitting. So he he worked on the project for a while, and then he ended up jumping out of the project. Uh, and his whole thing was, how can I do construction? and keep my spirituality and my response to him it was but even your work in construction can be spiritual mm -hmm. spiritual doesn't have to be a thing where you're sitting on a mat and praying and, and and meditating for you know 12 hours a day or anything like that you can be spiritual and you're in the work that you're doing can be done in a spiritual manner um he was younger at the time so he probably didn't understand that at that time um, but I, I was trying to uh, convey to him that anything can become spiritual it doesn't have to be um uh something that's uh, traditionally a, a spiritual. It, it could be spiritually even by laying bricks. Um, yes. There's a perspective that you can have while doing that. Uh, so I think a lot of people, like what you're saying, have this belief that you're going to leave all that and become this thing. And it does, it does happen to some people. Uh, some people, that's their calling. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, I've always been, well, I haven't always been, but for the last 18 years, almost 18 years, I've been a youth worker. Um, that hasn't changed. But how I do my youth work has changed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and again, there's a there's a transmission that happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if you speak, if I spoke to your students or anybody spoke to your students, they'd say that they felt comfortable in your presence and they probably reveal things to you that they don't reveal to other people. There's a safety there. And there's a, a, a feeling of kind of coming home and being being okay with where they are and who they are. It's mm. usually um the way i would describe it but i'm sure you've seen your own evidence of that as well in the work that you've done yeah well these things that i've i speculate um in in regards to that that it, that it could be referring to um this this transmission uh yeah so there's, there's been tons of things that has happened and i went oh that must be that thing that's happening right now in this moment oh yeah yes for sure and right. uh and it's and it kind of takes on its own shape and movement and so on and and it acts in the lives of the people that you're working with in ways that we again we couldn't even begin to imagine. Oh, yeah. that's the thing. That's a thing too. One thing that is true in regards to awakened beings, uh, the lives that you can actually end up changing, even though you have no conscious awareness of that. Um, so that's that's another interesting thing, which is probably a topic on its own. Um, but you people be amazed of. Um, a lot of the things that are happening uh, can be the result of an awakened being that's in the presence of that um, of whatever service that person's in and um, the conditions and the environment that that person's in. Changes are be are being made and people's lives are being changed, even though you may never get the credit for that. Yes, yes. And that can also happen on the subtle planes. It doesn't necessarily have to be a face-to-face -face meeting. Very true. I know, yeah, I mean... Even before um, I received Shakti Pat, I was having, you know, I've always had lucid dreams and out of body experiences and all of those things. And that really kind of blew up after after the Kundalini awakening. But 
Um, what also started to happen in, in addition to having visitations from great beings and angels and, you know, these teachers from diverse paths, faiths and traditions, I would also feel that my subtle body was being called. I'd wake up in a dream, you know, become aware this is a dream and I'm dreaming. And then mm -hmm. I'd feel this pull. Yeah. And I'd often go and have meetings with people I didn't know or I barely knew. And they would be asking questions and I would be giving them kind of support and advice and so on and so forth. And then oftentimes I'd find out later that the specifics of what this person had told me was, was that what was actually happening in their lives. For example, a health scare mm. or, you know, a, a psychological upheaval or whatever. And um, so there was, there was this, absolute validation that what what had happened in the subtle plane or on mm. the subtle plane was authentically happening in the in the waking state so i saw <laughs> saw that and of course you can read that master yogis speak about that quite often in terms of the work that they do on the subtle planes and in the dream state and so on and so forth but but without i wasn't it wasn't like i was studying it or you know yeah finding somebody that could teach me these practices or anything, it started to happen of its own accord, okay. and, and it still does. So, you know... Well, let me, of... let, me, let me add to what you just said there. Um, mm -hmm. Something like that happened to me this morning uh, on, a subtle, on a subtle dream plane. So I was dreaming. I was, I was hanging out with these two females, and we started to do a staring match. I, don't, I can't remember why we were doing the staring match, but uh, I started doing a staring match with the first female, with the first girl. So we're doing this uh, eye to eye contact and see how long we can look into each other's eyes without blinking or something like that. And then um, the second girl came in and uh, we started to do the same eye to eye, um, eye to eye staring match. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> my dream body, as I'm looking into her eyes, started moving. It started uh, to, 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 to move on its own accord and her body started to move in its own accord. And then I woke up and found myself in a seizure. <laughs> oh. yeah so i was having kriya oh, uh, just, yeah. just this morning and i was in the full um my whole body was in this um what people would look at as a seizure but i was having kriya it was mostly happening in my stomach area and my whole body was reacting to it and it, it lasted for about five minutes until it dissipated but that happened in the that started happening in the dream state wow yeah, yeah. that's really amazing yeah. so for those who don't know what a kriya is it might be good to you do you want to explain that oh gosh, in your I'm work? Explain kriya. well kriya oh, right. is like spontaneous um, bodily movements that happens within the body um and there's different types of the, these movements so it could be movements that are happening without your without your personal control without your self-control but they can happen in many ways so in my in it could happen through any part of the body where there's a chakra present um it can happen where your hands will do mudras um, you may, your whole body may do yoga positions and things of, of that sort on its own, or it, it can just have a full type of seizure type of movement within the body. And that usually happens because, um, there's a, um, if you want to call it chi or prana that's moving through the body. And sometimes, uh, um, that type of kriya will happen if there's a blockage somewhere within what they call the nadis, within the, the subtle bodies, sorry, within the subtle channels, which you call the nadis, N-A-D-I-S nadis and you have thousands and thousands and thousands of these these channels but they're so refined that um chi or prana is always trying to pass through these channels and anytime there's a block of any some sort the channel it will it will react and it will affect the nerves and everything in your body which will cause your muscle it cause muscle reactions and stuff within the body so that's one way of looking at um uh kriya i, I would say if, if there's too much energy coming through these refined channels it may cause a physical reaction. And because you have thousands of these, thousands of these could have uh, could have issues of this energy trying to pass through and it causes a physical reaction. So that, that's one way of looking at it uh, in regards to why the body will respond um, without your without your personal in intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, you know, another way of put putting it, of course, as well, is that this usually happens after an awakening, right? A Kundalini awakening, Christ consciousness, however you want to call it. And... You know, master yogis say that um, the kriyas, when there's a movement through, through, you know, in the in a through a kriya, which can be uh, physical, emotional, or psychological. Well, that's right. It can be emotional and psychological as well. Yep. 
Yeah, it's so some people will sometimes start just crying and crying uh-huh. and crying. Yeah. And um, that certainly happened to me the morning after I had this lucid dream, you know, Shakti Pat uh, experience. I was driving to work. It was only a three mile drive and I had to pull over because I just started sobbing hysterically. And I just yeah. I was shaking so violently I, I, and I didn't understand why. Yeah. And then I had to sort of compose myself. And then I got back on the road again and I'm driving. And then I had to pull over again because mm. I was laughing hysterically yeah, laughing hysterically like a crazy person and yeah. i just couldn't control it so there's different forms of the way different this forms. expresses but it's really about um you know releasing and, and allowing the energy to move through because yeah. it which... can also come out through uh, creativity it could come out through verbal expression it can happen through singing it could happen through as like you as you mentioned um crying or laughing or both happening at the same time um and of course body body movements um and there's so yeah there's, there's so many things that are happening as this energy is trying to pass through all these uh these subtle um these subtle channels and yeah. um and your body will react to it or your your subtle body like what you're speaking about in regards to the laughing and in, in the in the in the the crying may happen in one of the that sound like it happened in the emotional body yes yeah. yes it will yes. express itself any way it needs to so all these bodies um have uh are are uh connected to what we call the nadis and the nadis have to purify itself. So as it's purifying itself, uh, these are some of the reactions. Yeah, it's very, very cool when it happens. When it's happening, it's very awesome to watch it go down. Even though I don't, I'm not sure how people from the outside see it, but when they're happening to me, I'm very amused by them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it might be just another common one is when you know when people start to meditate, they might shake. You know, they might shake. Yeah. Or, yeah, um... they may shake, or they may feel like their body just split in half. Yeah, so yeah. You, you have to open your eyes and like, oh my gosh, did I just split in two? And you realize that nothing's happened to your physical body, but it'll feel like your body's split in half. There's so many different ways you can express it. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So let's come back around to talking about some of the myths, myths. Uh, the myths of self-realization. And I know you've probably got kind of a oh. a list of your own, but um... <laughs> perfection, perfection is one of them. People expect you to be perfect. Yes, uh, and that's yes. not true at all. Um, so that needs to be cleared up a bit. Now, when people talk about perfection, yes, in the moment of a spiritual attainment, in that moment, um, when you just come to that realization, you're experiencing perfection. That's true. You're experiencing perfection. You realize that all there is is you. And when I say you, you, you know what I mean, but uh, I'm talking about the self, which is the only thing that exists and non exists at the same time. And that's the only thing that exists. So everything is a manifestation of this perfection. And even the thing that is manifesting is happening perfectly. All of that is aware to you. Uh, of course, when you when you when you come out of that state and you're back in your regular state, even though you may see everything as happening as everything that is perfect or everything that's happening perfectly, it doesn't mean that you as an individual is now a perfect being that you that you now have no faults and you have no sin and you can't make a wrong decision uh, or you know uh, you may trip <laughs> over something. Yes. If you're a clumsy person before awakening, you're probably going to be a clumsy person after awakening. Um, yeah. None of those things necessarily change. Uh, to, uh, um, you may forget to pay a, full, uh, a bill. You, don't, you didn't pay your bill on time or something like that. Consequences still happen when your bill, bills aren't being paid. And you hear many stories of uh, people who actually, after a spiritual awakening, has gone financially bankrupt. And you hear all these different things. Those things don't necessarily change. What you realize, though, that everything is happening perfectly because everything is the self, everything is you, everything is a manifestation, yet that same manifestation that is manifesting from the self is the self. And that is happening perfectly, and it is perfect in every way, including your errors and your mistakes that happens within that perfection. Yes, absolutely. Really well said. I mean, one funny anecdote I can share is that Soon after I received this awakening, you know, and I was going through the beginnings of that, I was reading as many books as I possibly could get my hands on around what that, mm-hmm. what, what that, what was that was all about. And there was a photo of um, one of the master yogis who was on the grace grace the cover of one of the books I was reading, and he was smiling. And I just thought, wow, he has his face looks amazing. He has the most incredible teeth. You know, he's like shining with vitality because I thought that after an awakening, you would be, you know, have the, have the most incredible 
health and vitality and you'd look perfect and you'd be shining bright and all of those things. Yeah. And then they later find out that he had perfect, wonderful, amazing teeth because they were false teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly was, placed by the dentist. Yes, it was just <laughs> such a shock. It's like, oh, okay. So, and it took me some time to unravel from that kind of fantasy. You That's know, another nice. thing that is often promoted is that after self-realization, you'll, you know, you'll kind of have an eternal life you'll live forever or live until you know you're a very 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 advanced age to age and there'll be nothing wrong with you and of course that isn't true at all you, you know how many people who have reached uh, self-realization who have died from a heart attack mm -hmm. right there have been many that have died from heart attack a lot, a lot. Yeah. especially at a young age so that yeah. oh um uh ramana maharshi Think he died from a uh, from throat cancer throat cancer yes and his devotees would beg him to get to get help to bring somebody in he would just mm. say it's a gift of the mother it's the gift of mahashakti and he just bore the pain of it but but what i do remember reading specifically about him is that he was able to remove his awareness from the pain itself mm -hmm. and not feel it as as sharply as one would normally you know in normal kind of circumstances yeah. so they so they say or it can just be that he felt the pain just as anyone else would he just wasn't attached to the pain yes yes yeah. yes yeah. That, that's a better way of putting it but um yeah it's hard to say because not being in his body but yeah uh, Okay. ways of but, looking at it uh, yeah only from personal experience where i actually gone through pain when i was in certain states i felt the pain like it was there it's just i wasn't attached to it to the to the point where it didn't matter if the pain was there or not that didn't make a difference that didn't make a difference in regards to um who i actually was or who who i am so I, i'm just trying to picture what was what could be happening in his mind and um if it's non-dual i would say it, it's painless and painful and you're in the state of of, of the combination of those two which has a different feeling, just like hot water feels different than cold water. So you have hot water, you have cold water, but warm water feels different. Even though warm water is a combination of the two, it feels different than the two. Right. So just imagine someone being in that state, feeling whatever that thing is of being not a painless state, not a painful state, but a combination of the two, which has its own sensation. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So anyway, the whole sort of perfection ideal is, is, uh, <laughs> well, I think. Spiritual beings make mistakes. Spiritual beings um, uh, find themselves in financial uh, situations. Um, male spiritual beings, I can't speak too much on females, still have that uh, that libido and still have sexual attractions and things of that sort. That doesn't necessarily go away. Um, mm -hmm. It may happen in some people, but I question that because some people who are gain spiritual uh, attainment may have been asexual. Yes. It's a possibility yeah. too. So there's all these things that we're not considering prior to someone reaching a, a, a realization. But do these things go away mentally? No, I don't think they go away. Um, you may have, you now have the awareness, which is something that I, I, I encourage people to try to attain, is to have that awareness. So whatever whatever you're going through, um, you have an awareness of it. Uh, something like Osho said, um, someone asked, I can't, remember what, I, I can't remember what the statement was, something about smoking. And Osho said, continue to smoke, but smoke with awareness or something like that. I'm getting, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm getting the information wrong, but if, if you're smoking, smoke with awareness. Something happens when you do that same thing with awareness. Um, yes. That other spiritual teacher, what's his name again? I think I think he was the one that wrote, um, I am that. He was a Nizar, teacher. He was Nizar a teacher. Gagat. What's yes. his name? Was it Papaji or Nizar Gadatta? No, not Papaji. The other, Nizar uh, Gadatta, yeah. It, as far as I understand, he was a smoker. He never stopped smoking even after his attainment. He always no. cigar, smoking mm -hmm. pain. Probably that's what killed him. But probably, <laughs> yeah. But that didn't change. <laughs> no, no. But you know, the difference. What does change though is your identification with, like your yeah, ident identification with. with the story, identification with the with the habit or whatever, or the right. That you know, yes. That changes so doing that with a with a certain level of awareness. Yes, and, um, and that becomes extraordinary in everything that you're doing. Um, th there's 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 a there's a thing to it that when when you're going through that same motion, you're saying to yourself, "Wow, I I've never looked at it this way before." 
because uh, I, I still have all the disabilities and all the whatever faults that I have uh, because I'm spatially dyslexic and, and all that stuff. None of that has changed. But I became more aware within my space, my spatial dyslexia, um, dyslexia. And that has an amusement to it that I've never seen before. So before when I was looking at looking at it as a hindrance, I started to realize how it makes me this individual small self that I am. Or at least yes. I'm, I'm pre pretending to be. Yes. I change. Yeah. Um, yes. But but you're not identified with any of it. Yeah. And well, at least not as much anymore. Not as much. <laughs> Because that's yeah. another thing too, another myth um, that we can probably address is uh, the, the the belief that well, after you reach the spiritual attainment that you're fully non-attached to everything. I'm still attached to my children. I'm still attached to <laughs> yes. certain things. Yeah, but I have a different awareness of my attachment to these things like my children and, and things of that sort and relationships and, and all that. Um, but again, in the moment of a spiritual awakening, in that moment, you're fully free and attached from all those things. Um, the small self is going to creep back in again, but you now have a different level of awareness when the small self creeps back in. But in that moment, in, in the moment of attainment, yes, temporarily, all of that goes away. You're free, you're liberated. Everything is... And as when, when that state, because that state is temporary, but what stays with you is the realization of who you actually are. Yes, and that doesn't come That's and coming. go. That doesn't come That's, and go. Yes, yeah. Because when that happened to it, me back in 2008, it's been there ever since and it's still there now. Hasn't yes, changed. yes. And it doesn't matter how long or how big of an experience you have. You may have a, I don't know, an, a meditation or something that, that the last three hours or four hours or something. Or days. Or it might, it or... might be, yeah, or days. It might be three seconds or 10 seconds or whatever. But But once you have that direct experience, it's there. There's a shift and it's it's there and then it it doesn't come and go. So so in other words, as you said earlier, the self, the way I put it, is the self wakes up to itself and then somehow it doesn't go back to sleep again or it doesn't mm -hmm. hide or what, however you might want to put that. It is always here. And I remember uh, soon after, I mean, but what happened with me is I had a kind of a succession of kind of awakenings i had the yeah. beginning one which was the shaktipat experience and then went through you know different phases and mm -hmm. the one in 2016 was when there was this recognition that um the self has always recognized itself in the words of great beings or mm -hmm. in their books or when i hear them speaking there was something here always that recognized that so, so you know, recognition of the self is the self, is yeah. what was seen, and the self kind of sat up, saw itself. And then I remember after that, and, and that was a, an experience that was just a few seconds long or something. Oh, but seconds. after, yeah, but after that, I would check in the next morning, is it still here? And I called it it because I didn't know how else to put it. And I realized, yes, it is. It, is Has it, it gone anywhere? Yeah. No, it hasn't gone anywhere. You know, and at work, is it still here? Yes, it's still here. It can't go anywhere because, it, you know, it's awareness. It's a, another way of putting it is it's awareness aware of itself. And so that can never come and go. You know? yeah. It is always here, no matter it, it what. It is always here. Even if you're feeling crappy, upset with the world, yeah, you stubbed your there. toe, you're hungry, you've got a headache, you've got the flu, whatever's happening, it's it is is and, still there and it 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 never comes and goes it's the only thing that doesn't change everything else is subject to change subject to change i was having i was having that conversation with uh andrew cohen and andrew cohen said his uh teacher told him um the thing that never changes is uh what becomes apparent is no doubt so yes. when you have no doubt that this thing is apparent that this thing um that this thing is the self um, you are, you are, um, spiritually awakened. So when, what, so when all doubt has, has vanished and that's gone away, that's what it is. And it's so true when you look at it, because from that moment on, as you can also attest to that, there is no doubt. Well, because when people say, well, you have a belief that, so no, 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 I'm not talking about a belief. I'm talking about something that is fully apparent. Anyone can see this. It's right there in front of you, right here, right now. Not just in front of you, it's happening within you, it's happening all around you, it's happening within all of us. 
And when you have that realization, um, it's not something that you question anymore. It's it you have no doubt that this thing is what it is, that this thing is real. Um, and yeah. everything that's coming from that is also real. It's just it's not what it appears to be. It's disguising itself for its own for its own amusement. And we're a part of all that and we're all doing it. And we laugh at the moment, realize that that's what we're doing. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, in a way, it's very simple. It's so simple, it's overlooked. Because if you ask anybody, are you aware right now? Are you aware? They'll say, of course, I'm aware. You know? aware. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, are you aware or is awareness aware of itself is another way of putting it. Is awareness aware of itself? Okay, and so. most people go. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 the the silence again. Si the silence will speak to that, right? The silence speaks to it, and because the mind cannot wrap itself around that question or that inquiry, and what's left is yeah. what is re 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 uh, you know readily available and readily seen. You know, awareness is here, and awareness is aware of itself. It's aware of itself, and so true. And, it's and that's the truth, the truth of being, and that's the truth for everybody. But of course, yeah. we we like to kind of go on these long winding spiritual searches for whatever. <laughs> Just with the ego, the ego is always trying to create that that story, write that script. Um, yeah, it, it's it's for its own amusement, but um, it's right here, it's right here, right now. Um, if anyone is able to just surrender and just let go, they'll come to that realization themselves. It's, it's right here, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we make it hard for ourselves. What's a what's another myth? Um, another <laughs> myth that um, certainly something I believed in the beginning, and then I kind of saw through was after an awakening, you should only follow um, healing methodologies that are kind of organic. You know oh, what I mean? So, like, I don't know. You should always do acupuncture. You should always yes. Do yeah, yes, from main, mainstream um, uh, uh, medicine. But, yes, uh, yeah. put, put, put your water in the sun and let the sun charge, supercharge it for 12 hours or whatever. Oh, and drink. You know, I went to that place too. You know, all those things, yeah. you know, that, that you read about and hear about that you tend to think you you, you should be doing, you know. Yeah. And so, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I've worked with clients who have really stumbled there they've had a chronic condition or a very, you know, difficult condition that they've been dealing with. And they have chosen to try and follow a sort of organic or natural sort of methodology yeah. and yeah, found, themselves, found themselves in a worse place because they didn't deal with whatever they, such as cancer, for example. Oh yeah. So, so the, the thing is, is that there's, there's room for everything. So, you know, the important thing is, is oh, yeah. to, you know, Throw all of that out. <laughs> you know, everything should be uh, respected and valued. Yeah. And if it's part of your healing journey to have chemotherapy, for example, or whatever that looks like, mm -hmm. then it's important to to value that and to honor that and not feel like you've got to try some alternate method yeah. to, your, to your detriment. Um, so I've seen that quite a few times. Oh, yeah. um, I <laughs> think that... Yeah, both have their place. I mean, they both uh, have their place. Yeah, Reiki is fantastic. You know, ma massage is great. Breath yeah. work, fantastic. All of those things are absolutely marvelous. Mm -hmm. They um, have their place, though. Um, but I can speak to that personally. Um, for years, uh, I was told years ago about um, controlling my my high blood pressure, and uh, I, I said I'm, I'm going to try all these alternative methods. And I would try them, I would do them, but every time I went back to the doctors to get the checkup, my the situation didn't change. Even though I found a lot of those things beneficial, but the situation didn't change. It's only it's only in tw in 2020 I actually decided to do the, the mainstream method, and that method did work for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, all the alternative ones that I was doing that that mainstream method did work, and it's still working till now. And uh, I've maintained my high blood pressure just by just changing my biased belief systems in regards to ignoring mainstream uh, medicine, but it has its place. It's not perfect. It's limited, um, but it has its place from time to time. And you have to know when to use them and uh, when, uh, when, when to know that something's probably toxic for you, not good for you. Yes. Yes. And that doesn't mean that you discount 
you know, miracles and grace and things oh, no. that can it, it, happen. It can happen. It can happen. Yeah. And I still go to my chi master. I still go and I get treatments for my chi master. I still go through acupuncture. I still take my herbs and do all those things. I just applied some mainstream stuff to my diet because it had to be done. Doctor says, he said, you can have a heart attack at any moment now. You have to do something about this. So I yes. just, you know what? Let me do what I got to do. And it's made exactly. a difference. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, I mean, that is another myth that's quite kind of um, common. Yeah, and a lot of people trapped in this whole thing that it has to be one or the other. And it's like, no, yes. both both have their, their, their place. It's about looking into them. I think everyone should do the research and find out what they're getting into. But yeah, I, I don't want to be caught in this thing where I'm, I'm one side and not for the other. I realized through my life period of my 52 years of being alive that um, both sides have their place. I'm not for one over the other. I, I, um, I'm just for, for better health in general, for the small self, big self doesn't care about any of that, but for the small self, I care about, uh, general health and, uh, you know, physical yeah. health, mental health, emotional health. Yeah, exactly. You should not be ignored just because you're spiritually, uh, awakened of whatever that means. Um, all those things still, still count. Yes. Yes. Because otherwise you, like this woman I was telling you about, I mean, she just left it so late that. It was then too late for chemo. It Absolutely was too sure. late. To, yeah. So yeah. it was um, because of trying to do it through diet and through whatever else she was doing. And um, it well, was well. Different in body types. There's different body types. And um, we haven't mastered all of that yet. So we don't know, I guess, uh, uh, from what I know, we don't know for sure which type is, which, which method is good for what type. And yeah, we're still trying to work that all out. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, myths associated with self-realization, but there is another please, one I do want to bring up that's please, please. Uh, come up many times, and that is that post-awakening, when somebody's had a shift, you know, however that looks for them, that they tend to gauge their progress by the quality of their thoughts and the number of thoughts. So, so they tend to think if they have a negative thought, then they've reverted back to where they were before awakening uh -huh. or it's a bad sign or they're not making progress or they need to double down on their meditation or whatever it is and um, and they say things like i shouldn't be having these thoughts or i shouldn't be feeling uh -huh. this way or i shouldn't be feeling angry and all of that and of course you know that is is nonsense so the point <laughs> You're supposed to get angry. <laughs> You're exactly. supposed to feel if someone if someone uh, betrays me in any way, I, I, I can't think of a situation at the moment, but if someone betrays me, someone rips me off financially, it's okay for me to be angry in that moment. Yes. <laughs> of course. And the to honor. And to, yes, okay. and and to, to honor. honor. Yeah. My yes. physical body needs to go through that. That's what's what that's what that's for. Um, so yeah. that doesn't go away because I remember one time getting angry and the person said, you're supposed to be spiritually awake. He's not supposed to be angry. I think for, for I have more reason to be angry <laughs> of knowing who and what I am. Yeah, I'm supposed to feel those those things. That, that, yeah. that, that is showing that your body is functioning properly. Yes. And you're not spiritually bypassing, which is. You're not spiritually, and you're not spiritually bypassing. A lot of people yeah. uh, tend to forget that. And so you you, you do yourself. Uh, more damage by bypassing and ignoring um, what should be coming up because you're supposed to uh, be spiritual. The spiritual yes. is not a character that we're playing. It's not. It's not a role that we're trying to to play. A lot, a lot of people fall into that trap. Spiritual awakening is spiritual awakening. Is you becoming aware of the self. Your physical yes. body still goes through anger. Still goes through uh, sorrow. Someone dies, you still mourn. Yeah. Um, when a baby's born, you may cry tears of joy because. You're welcoming your 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 child or your grandchild. None of those things necessarily change. Um, how you how you perceive them, your perspective, your awareness shifts as you're going through them. You may even be more amused by the down the highs and lows that you go through as a human being, as an individual. But those things don't change. Like I still get angry. Yes, I still and, shout and when I need to, and I need to put my foot down, and something's not going my way, or when I'm working with my students and things aren't going my way, and I have to be stern. And whatever, yeah. that doesn't change. I, I'm trying yeah. to, in the moment, I'm trying to get you to do the right thing. Yes. And the other, watching the whole thing happen and going down. Yeah, exactly. The other thing as well is, is that if anger does come up and it's really huge, you know, it's big, 
the, the important part is to look at what the anger is here to tell us or yeah. teach us or point yeah. to, right? Point to, yeah. Rather than trying to sort of manage it and push it down yeah. or meditate it away or pretend yeah. that you're not angry and like put on this because I'm spiritual, you know, I'm not supposed to, which is just bullshit. It's just bullshit. Yeah. So it's yeah. all about. Most of them are written to sell books or to, to amuse people and they are very amusing. And after when you get into it and you realize, it's like the same with anything else. So just like when I got into youth work, I can remember all the movies I watched where someone went into the neighborhood, into the uh, marginalized neighborhood and saved the day. And you and you see these movies over and over and over again. There's always a happy ending. And then you go yeah. into actual work and it's like, oh my gosh, it's not this way at all. The, no. the challenges are ongoing. They never stop. And even yeah. though I may be able to um, fix a certain situation, a new one comes up, a new one arises. And even if I'm able to help an individual in a certain case, they have other challenges that will come up. It never ends. Yes. Right? And it's yeah. the same thing when it comes to this. Just because you've reached the spiritual attainment, it doesn't mean these things go away. No, right? it's, it's actually... Ongoing. <laughs> yeah, in, in a, it's actually the, the real work begins. <laughs> so that's when the real work begins. And in some cases, they become worse. It's just you yes. have a higher threshold to deal with it because exactly. of that attainment, yeah. Exactly. So, listen, I mean, we could speak <laughs> at great length about all of these myths, but those are some so great many. ones, I think, to begin with anyway. Um and it, it's really important to look at because you can really stumble and get stuck. Yes, in it can become places. a trap for spiritual uh, awakened beings of trying to fulfill this role that people expect you to fill, which is going to be a possible, an impossible task. Yes, um, yeah. because, then, yeah, yeah, if you try to hold yourself still because you're awakened, right, and not allow you know, negative moods or thoughts to come up or feelings <laughs> or, you know, you've, you're not. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck you know, with that, right? Good as luck. a spiritual being, you're still going to experience lust. You're still going to experience hardship. You can still experience disappointments, dissatisfaction from time to time. Maybe there's a job position that you want you didn't get. You're still going to feel a certain way about it. Um, yes. But again, that, that thing, that es the essence of who you are is the witness and watches it all go down and says and says to itself, and I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but it says to itself, wow, that was amusing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember one time. I remember one time I was at work and I got in trouble for something. And the boss is trying to power trip and trying to, to he was trying to yell at me. And I just looked at him. I just started laughing, and he was he took offense to it. He's like, "Why are you laughing? I'm being serious right now in the moment." I'm just like, "All of this to me is a joke." <laughs> yeah. You know, what I mean, that's yeah. how I felt in the moment. I'm just like, "This is ridiculous." I I don't know who you're trying to power trip on, but yeah, none of yeah. this is really getting to to me. At least not to the to the big self. I just watched it all go down. I said, this is very amusing. Yes, yes. Um, I see you a different way after that. They say, oh, wow. Something about him is just, I can't shake. Mm -hmm, Something mm -hmm. about this. Per and it's like, you can't shake me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter what's going on, right? But nothing changes in regards to how I feel, right? So, mm -hmm. Yes. Anyway, um, all of these things are, I think, great to, to just shine some light on, you know, with respect to beliefs around becoming someone you, you know, um, improved version, uh, trying to find better better work or, or spiritual <laughs> work, you know, thoughts, you know, feelings, uh, all of those things. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're still human, so we're going to yeah. continue playing that role as, as human. Exactly. But just, but just imagine being Tom Cruise playing the character he played in, uh, in uh, Mission Impossible, and he fell into the trap of believing that he was the character playing Mission Impossible. Yes. That was the trap. Yes. Now I know that he's Tom Cruise, the actor playing the role of the, mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the character in Mission Impossible, but you get the gist of it, right? So it's like, yes. it doesn't change. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't change. Okay, so I think we, I, I'm amazed that it's been, we've been on here almost an hour, I think, something oh, yeah. like that. So, <laughs> so maybe for this episode, we can end here and um, maybe continue this conversation uh in another episode that'd be really great that no, sounds great love to yeah so morgan thank you so much as always for joining me this has been a real pleasure i really loved it and um oh, thank you for having me have thank you i really appreciate it thank you and thank you everybody for joining us today on talking true if you enjoy the content then please let pe other people know and if you haven't already subscribed you know what to do so until next time, take it easy, be well, and bye for now.